Eastern Ukraine. The governor of the Luhansk province says most of the key city of Severodonetsk is now in Russian hands. The prosecutor of the International Criminal Court has described Ukraine as a crime scene where they will be carrying out the biggest ever investigation. It's 7 in the morning here in Singapore and 2 a.m. in Ukraine, where it's reported that a Russian airstrike has hit a chemical plant in the embattled city of Severodonetsk, releasing a cloud of dangerous gas. Residents have been told to stay in bomb shelters to avoid the fumes. The Ukrainians say Russian forces now control most of Severodonetsk, the main focus of the Russian offensive in the Donbass region. The local governor said the city wasn't surrounded, but continuous shelling was making it impossible to bring in supplies or evacuate the remaining civilians. And Russian troops are pushing deeper into the region. This is the city of Slovyansk, where three people have been killed in a Russian missile strike. Meanwhile, Ukraine keeps calling for more weapons from the West. This is the former defense minister speaking to the BBC. Uh, we will all be, always be looking at counteroffensives because uh, because as soon as we can as soon as we can get more weapons, particularly these are artillery weapons which are being shipped right now from the West, uh, we can go to counteroffensive. And uh, because Russians, as I said, they are applying everything they can in order to get there, and they're bringing uh, they're bringing their uh, old the artillery systems, they're bringing all tanks, they're bringing all the equipment, and so on. So. Uh, so currently, they're at maximum of their of their capacity, of maximum of their capability, and Ukraine is still gaining capabilities from the allied countries. So we do believe that the counteroffensive is in the, in the future. Well, our correspondent in Kiev, James Waterhouse, explains the importance of Western weapons in this fight. Well, the Ukrainians have long been calling for more weapons. Frankly, they are outgunned and outnumbers, are outnumbered by the Russians in the eastern Donbass region. As a result, the Russians are more easily able to, able to deploy familiar tactics as they try to surround more cities. Severodonetsk, we're told by authorities there, that there is now fighting inside the city, uh, a place where 15,000 people are thought to be trapped. I think the taking of Severodonetsk for the Russians will be more symbolic than strategic, estimations from the West is that it would simply allow the Russians to claim a few more miles of territory. But crucially for Vladimir Putin, he can turn back to uh, his people and say this is the first significant achievement in this so-called special military operation. The other half of the Donbass region, uh, the Donetsk region, is still in his sights. Uh, and this is all part of a sizable land corridor now occupied by the Russians, making up a fifth of Ukraine. Well, and in another development, the prosecutor of the International Criminal Court has described Ukraine as a crime scene and said the tribunal was carrying out its largest ever investigation there with plans to open an office in Kyiv. Our correspondent Anna Holligan at The Hague has more details. The joint investigation team is working together to gather, preserve and share evidence of alleged atrocities. And they're looking at everything at the moment from cases of rape to the deliberate killing of civilians to the forcible transfer of children. The Ukrainian prosecutor who's here in The Hague pointed out they didn't have access to some of these alleged crime scenes which are currently under Russian occupation, but they do have access to people, victims, witnesses and to areas that have been liberated by the Ukrainian forces. The ICC prosecutor Karim Khan talked about the importance of sharing not just evidence but also the investigative skills, forensic techniques among the member states. Uh, he also talked about the importance of the ICC's presence in the region, uh, which is why they are working on uh, setting up an office in the capital, Kiev. Um, Beyond this, uh, thousands of atrocities are now uh, under investigation. 600 suspects have been identified, including within the military and political circles, according to the Ukrainian prosecutor. Um, the ICC prosecutor pointed out this case wasn't just about protecting Europeans or European values, but he said basic human standards in the 21st century. President Biden has confirmed that the United States will provide Ukraine with more advanced rocket systems and munitions as intense fighting continues in the east of the country. We can speak to our correspondent Joe Inwood, who's in Kyiv this morning. And Joe, this is something the Ukrainians have been wanting for a while, isn't it? Why are these weapons so important for them? 
I, I think to understand that, you've got to understand the importance of artillery in general for this whole war. The way the Russians usually fight is with mass barrages of both rocket launch systems and howitzers, big artillery pieces, and they pound areas into submission before moving in with armor. Now, at the moment, they outgun the Ukrainians really significantly. They've got bigger guns, and they've also got more of these multiple launch rocket systems, and that's what we're talking about today. Now, what the Americans have said they will give them is not just something which has got a longer range, about double the range of the Russian systems, but also something that's much more accurate. So what the Ukrainians are hoping is that these new systems, which can go about 80 kilometers or so, well, that will be a game changer. It means that they can move their artillery into range of the Russian guns, but the Russians can't strike them back. Now, if they come through, and if they come through in time, and that's the real question, how quickly do they get here? This will give the Ukrainians what they say could be a decisive advantage. But as I say, the big question is how quickly can they get them here and how quickly can they be put into use on the battlefield? We will see, Joe. Thank you very much indeed for now. There is a big night of football ahead. Scotland play Ukraine in the World Cup semi-finals, playoff semi-finals tonight. Yeah, this is the match. It was delayed, wasn't it, from March because of the outbreak of the war in Ukraine. Uh, Chet and Patak is at Glasgow's Camden Park for us, where they're going to be playing later. Uh, this is a big moment, Chetan. It's a huge moment for both Scotland and Ukraine. John, the sun is out at Hamden this morning. Kickoff not until 7.45 this evening, but the build-up, as you said, beginning since March when the match was cancelled for obvious reasons, postponed until now because of the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Since then, the Ukrainian team, half the players haven't been playing competitive football. They've been holed up in a training camp in Slovenia. Scotland, very different. Their players, of course, playing in Champions League finals, Championship playoff finals, as well as in the Premier League and the Scottish Premiership. But what of tonight? Huge emotion around it for obvious reasons, as Chris McLaughlin now reports. It's a group of players preparing for a game most of the world wants them to lose. If Scotland are to make it to Qatar, they must first see off Ukraine. Even a former Scotland captain has been vocal in recent days about cheering on the away side. Graham Souness has split opinion, I think it's safe to say. Were you surprised? By him saying that he wants Ukraine to win, I can't, I can't, I can't put my mind, or I can't put myself into anyone else's mind. Everyone has an opinion on the situation. Every opinion will be different on it. Uh, I focus on myself. I want to go to, like I said earlier, I want to go to Ukraine with, uh, sorry, I want to go to Qatar with, with Scotland, uh, and and the players want to go as well. So that's what I'll focus on. His players, like everyone else, know exactly the horrors faced by the countrymen and women of their fellow professionals. They know too the lift a victory would give a nation fighting for its very survival. It's impossible to imagine. Um, it doesn't change anything from, from our point of view. Um, it's still still a football match, it's 11 v 11 and no matter what's going on out with that, it, it's about us sticking together and, and putting our uh, game plan in place and, and making sure we do what we, we can. Ukraine trained at Hamden, afterwards a media conference. Where Manchester City player Alexander Zinchenko broke down talking about Ukrainian children. We can speak a lot, but we need to do on the pitch. So that's what we're going to try to do tomorrow. We're going to try to, to make them happy and proud. It was 3-1 Scotland back in 2007. In very different times, the same again would be cheered around the country, but maybe not around the world. Chris McLaughlin, BBC News. And the Scotland captain, Andy Robertson, very honest, saying he understands almost the whole world will want Ukraine to win. Whoever wins this match tonight will play Wales in the playoff final on Sunday. And the winner of that match will head to the World Cup in Qatar later this year.